So the question's long been asked, if Harley Davidson built an airplane, would you fly it? Today we got a super cool project for you guys. Uh, something that we've never done here at Wheels Through Time. We're gonna try and fire up and maybe fly the 1927 Harley Davidson powered home build airplane we've had at the museum. Now here at the museum, the, the plane's been here, geez, for 20 plus years. My dad actually bought it at a swap meet, uh, Wasian, Ohio swap meet from a good pal of ours. Bruce Lindsday is one of the kind of head conservators in the Antique Motorcycle Club of America. And uh, my dad always being into odd and, and different things, ended up picking up this airplane uh, from Bruce and one of a kind, completely original condition. And the thing hasn't flown in probably 80 years. So we're gonna try and get this thing bolted together. We actually had this inside on display inside the museum for years and years it sat up on a table wingspans i think i think we measured it was 26 feet uh we actually took the wings off to get this thing outside to fire it up for you guys today so a little bit of work we've actually got the left wing already bolted on uh right wing is going to go on here shortly we'll probably have some hookups to do in the cockpit we don't even know if this thing's going to run or not so the best part about this thing you know, the thing's in incredible condition. Actually utilizes a 1920s Harley Davidson J engine. I'll tell you all about it here real shortly. Uh, but for the most part, this thing rests in original condition. It looks like it was put up in flying condition. Uh, so here we are bringing her back down. Maybe today's the day. Uh, the wings bolt on their supports from underneath that you guys will see us install here in just a second. So this thing is an absolute work of art, built in 1927 in Oneida, New York by a fellow named Wilson Miller. All right, I had these marked, that is right side rear. Wilson Miller, at the time he built this, I think the kid was 20 years old. So if you can imagine uh, setting off to build an airplane when you're 20 years old, the way it actually kind of happened, the guy entered a contest for airplane blueprints and uh, Ended up winning the contest, and with the, the, the winnings, he actually won $100. The contest was put on by Modern Mechanics Magazine. Uh, he ended up winning the contest for his light plane blueprints uh, with the $100 check that he got. He actually built his airplane. So things entirely handmade, uh, wood, fabric, all the, it's just absolutely incredible. The thing probably doesn't weigh 300 pounds. And uh, yeah, you're looking good. Now the story I always heard was that Bruce is the last guy to have this thing running and uh, hand start, but he never actually flew it. Bruce told me at the last swap meet we were at, when I told him I was thinking about running this thing, that he actually got in it, had it fired up, was ready to taxi it. And his wife came running out of the building and made sure that he stayed on the ground. So luckily my wife's not here right now, so there's no, uh, there's no good judgment around here. We're just gonna go for it. So hopefully we can get this thing fired up, guys. Now what we're looking at, come on over here, Steve. This thing is incredible. <laughs> and the old saying, if Harley built an airplane, would you fly in it? V-twin. 1927 Harley Davidson engine. That's what Wilson Miller used for the core of his, of his build here. And 74 cubic inches, it was Harley's power plant really from 1921 all the way through 29, virtually identical engine to this. So this is actually set up with a, a Baby Bosch racing magneto, ultra rare racing mag. If this wasn't on such a cool plane, I'd love to put it on one of my racers. Uh, updraft Schebler carburetor, normally your carb hangs way, way up here. Uh, they've got this thing way down low. I assume it's probably because of where the gas tank sits. Uh, it's the only way to get fuel pressure actually to the tank um, or to the carburetor, excuse me. So gas tanks right up here behind the engine. This is a pocket valve. So what you've got intakes up, up top, exhaust down low, kind of hidden back down here. Now, one of the coolest things is about Miller's design, probably one of the things that got him the win on that popular mechanics or modern mechanics contest back in the day was this homemade gear reduction drive. Okay. So a lot of guys that would maybe want to take this on, you know, you think and remember 1920s. So what's known about aviation is far less than what's known today. Uh, 
you can't just bolt this prop right to an engine like this. This engine's made to spin up 25, 2800, potentially even 3500 RPMs on the top side. Uh, spinning a prop too fast is kind of like spinning a prop too slow. So there's that optimal range based on aircraft weight. I'm sure wingspan, uh, uh, you know, prop size and pitch, RPM uh, is crucial. So what Miller did was he actually built this homemade gear reduction drive that bolts to a JD engine. And it looks like it's probably one, you know, I'm just winging it here, probably uh, one to two. So this slows the prop down maybe to half speed. Uh, and absolutely amazing. It's a hand built, it looks great compression. It's hand built. I assume the guy poured the thing in his garage. It's cast aluminum. You can see all the little file marks. Uh, fantastic machining job. Probably gear driven looking at the shape of this. So uh, what that does actually, the engine, the way that it's mounted in this, this uh, plane, engine spins this way. And what this does is it actually reverses the uh reverses the rotation so we're pretty close we got the wings on that's you know it's a big step you know a tiny little garage door getting this thing out this thing hasn't moved in years we've got the wings on i think chris the next step is for me and you probably to put oil in the lower end we'll drain it see what's in there right now probably the same oil as when bruce ran it last now my dad never actually fired this thing up um, when I was a kid, right shortly after he got it, they sprayed a little bit of fuel into the, the, the spark plug holes or possibly in the primer cups here, which is how we're going to prime it, uh, spun it over. He got it to pop, but he didn't actually get this thing to run. Uh, hopefully we're going to have a little bit better luck than he did 20 something years ago. Um, Chris, let's me and you go ahead and get to work. Be... All right, let's see what we got here. Um, Oh man, there's a ton of oil. So these things, well, it looks like a ton of oil. These things are made only to run these engines with about two or three, four, four ounces of oil at the most. And all the racing stuff that we run, I like to run less than that, two ounces. Oil in your crankcase is drag. This thing right here looks like we're already at four ounces um, and it's still coming. It kind of looks like gassy oil too. Wow, that thing is full. So we're at at least six there. So that wasn't gonna make it any easier to start. We put the right amount of oil in this thing. Now, we're using standard 50 weight oil. That's what we run in all of our early stuff. Uh, when we fill this thing up with gas, we didn't get any aviation fuel. We're just gonna use the 87 pump stuff that you get at the gas station up the road. Uh, uh, yeah, let's. it won't take much to tip it forward. Look at there, you can just, okay. I'm gonna, he's gonna overflow, I'm gonna huh? You're I'm gonna run out of bottles. That's right. good. So we haven't messed with a carburetor at all on this. It's a Shebler DLX, like 1920s Harley Davidson Indian carburetor. It looks fantastic, perfect nickel plating. What's kind of concerns me, it's got this ultra long draw in here all the way up to the intake. It's gonna be tough. Now it's been like fiberglass or something um around the outside which hopefully that's still going to work if not there's going to be crazy intake leak it'll make it real difficult uh to actually uh maintain any sort of fuel flow but the carburetor looks great i'm hoping that the float works or else we're going to be opening another can of worms oh uh, looky there yep so we don't have much in there let me just get this last little bit in now this thing is so incredibly light you can actually pull the whole plane up from the front got photos of this thing flying back in the day back in the late 1920s early 1930s and there's a couple pictures of this thing upside down it was so light that when the fella landed or potentially when he was taken off if he bounced the wrong way and that tail got too high the thing would just flip right over so okay we're set that's good enough that's pretty nice clean oil too yeah. so it ain't bad um one step closer guys we're gonna add some oil i think we just add gas uh, now the cockpit is something else. What we're gonna have to do here 
is make sure all of those controls work. I kind of preliminarily uh, fiddled around with what was inside of the cockpit. It seems like everything's fine. There's, you know, there's a lot to control on one of these. You've got throttle, spark advance, kill switch. Um, you got to have a way to get the fuel down to the engine in the first place. Here, let's go around the other side. Um, let me grab this GoPro here real quick so you guys can see exactly what's in there. Um, tachometer. We got a fuel pump here. Um, you see all the controls. Um, this right here is actually a choke. Um, on off switch right here. So they're off on here. It's magneto ignition. So that just grounds out the magneto when you bring it back to the center. Um, what else do we have here? Throttle right here. Um, just a pretty simple throttle lever. You know, you're not gonna be blipping this. A steady throttle is crucial. Uh, now what you've actually got here um, is this up and down here controls the flap on the back. The two pedals up front actually control uh, the rudder in the back. Um, so that's your left and right, and then uh, this way and this way. And as you can see, we haven't hooked this stuff up over on this side is actually what controls the pitch on your wings. So uh, really, really neat stuff. What do we got? The RPM uh, aviation type uh, tachometer there, you got 2,500 RPM. So what we're gonna do is make sure we're clicked on here um set this throttle i think back is off so we're going to set this throttle about halfway um and we're going to say a prayer and hope this thing fires up and doesn't take off now the scary part is going to be getting way around this wing and actually <laughs> maybe i'll dive under the wing i don't know you fire that thing up and you kind of got um well we'll see what happens so Let's give it a go, Chris. Okay. Let's add the oil first, then add the gas, okay. and we'll give it a crank. I've heard of some Harley airplanes, but this is the only one I know that's this old. Um, brave soul who built this thing, dreamed it up and, and flew it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some oil in it. I'm nervous, you nervous, Chris? I'm not the one spinning the prop, so. Uh. <laughs> Let me say maybe 30 pumps. It's not running for long, and there's probably plenty of residuals still on the walls of the cases. Well, that's a lot more than 30 pumps, but that's okay. I think we're set. All right. Let's get this tightened back down. We'll uh, grab the funnel, the gas can over here. And then uh, what I'm also going to do is we'll unscrew these primer cups and try and give it a go there. Now, I, uh, I'm hoping that we've got fuel to the carburetor. The, fuel, the petcock's on, the fuel line's hooked up, uh, so we're going to crack that line too and make sure once we uh, get going, okay. That's good. All right. Throttle is up, or, or yeah. off, off is up. It's me, yeah, okay. Yeah, and can you reach the, the kill switch there? Yep. Re middle, re reach up. to it, straight up and down. Yeah, that's so if off. it goes crazy, that's off. Okay. Um, and I'll yell at you, let you know. A little prime. One. Me either. Chris, give it a, uh, yeah, that's a fair amount of throttle. There you go, you ready, Jerry? Ready. <laughs> Nothing yet. Are you on? Yeah, all the way to the right's yeah. on, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> Get that! Unbelievable!
feel it wanting to pick up. Yeah, it's 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 wanting to pick up. Yeah. How about it? <laughs> Holy crap, that oh, thing makes that. incredible noise. <laughs> oh my god, I about flipped out when it started up. Oh, it scared me to death. <laughs> What's that noise? All right, so we know it runs. Next step, we're gonna try and taxi this thing. So I got my helmet, safety first, ladder, you gotta be able to get in this thing. It's gonna be tough as, as it is just to get in it, but I think that ought to get us there. Um, I'm just gonna leave this here. I'll put it on before we go. Yep, so we're gonna fire this thing up. Are you guys ready? So you're holding it down. This thing, when we were running this earlier, you could feel it wanting to pick that rear end of that plane right up. Now, we don't have the wheels chalked now. I don't know if this thing's gonna come right at me or not. So there's a chain in back. John's gonna hold the chain. Chris is operating the throttle. You're gonna wanna bring that throttle down about as, not as low as it'll run, but yep. to where it feels smooth. Sure. But um, okay, give it some more, okay. more throttle. You got ignition on? Ignition is on. Yet again, the 1927 Miller light plane. Here we go. Think about that. Oh, that's oh, incredible. Oh, God. It was fun, dude. It, yeah. This is a real airplane. <laughs> yeah, this is no, this is not something for show. Everybody, we've had this thing at the museum all the time we've been here in Maggie Valley. We've had it when we were in Mount Vernon, Illinois for probably five or six years. I think my dad bought this in 1994 or 95. Most commonly asked question Did you think it ever actually flew? Um, my standard answer was, of course it flew, there's photos, but as of today, I have no doubt this thing would absolutely get up in the air. How long it'd stay up in the air is another question. It is just a Harley Davidson. Uh, <laughs> but guys, unbelievable, epic day. I never thought we'd actually get this thing fired up and going, but here we are, team. Thanks a ton for helping with all of that. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not speechless dude. often, but just incredible man it fires right up it operates it does what it's supposed to it picked that rear end up when i brought the throttle up it picked like unless you were helping back a there a little bit from both just got it yeah right yeah, yeah it's Holy. amazing how quick it picks it up off it the ground it picks it up off the ground yeah. man unbelievable well you know, you know you can't push from back there yeah. so all that we made and i was never even more than half or three quarter throttle um god i felt like there was some resistance back there it might have been your leg but I don't know. It, maybe it was huh, amazing, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Wheels through time. Everything runs. As you guys know, today we can say that the airplane, the Wilson Miller, Miller light plane, fires up, runs, probably flies. If you guys are digging what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe. Wheels through time here on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Most importantly, come to the museum and see what this place is all about. We'll see you guys next time. Oh man, unbelievable. <laughs> Dude, <that was> unbelievable. <laughs>